Hey everybody, this is Josh McKinney, and I just want to welcome you to another question and answer on the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu show. Uh, generally, I get the questions from people sending me emails, or um, if I don't have enough, I'll always post on my Instagram story and ask people if they have any questions, if there's anything that they want answered. And the reason I do that is in hopes that maybe you guys, if you want a question answered, that you will follow me on the gram. Uh, if not, anytime you have a question, I don't do the question and answers all the time. I enjoy doing them, but uh, I don't do them all the time. Uh, anytime you have a question though, send it to me and I will just put it in my um, kind of folder that I keep when I'm going to do a question and answer. And because we just came out with the Simplifying Jiu-Jitsu ebook and it is still currently free, uh, it is free till June 23rd. So uh, about a little less than a week. It will uh, no longer be free. Since we've done that, I've had a ton of people um, get it. I've had a ton of people uh, sign up for it. If you don't know how to get it, it is at bjjsucks.com slash simple. Okay. So uh, it is an ebook that I wrote just about how, how can we approach making jujitsu simpler? How can we approach making our jujitsu training simpler? Um, I don't simplify techniques. I think um, I think a lot of times what happens is you you learn techniques that are too advanced, or you learn a lot of techniques, and you have to start simplifying your, them yourself and simplifying your game yourself. But we really look at training methodology and how we can simplify it. But since I did that, I've had a lot of people get it. I've had a lot of people have some really interesting follow up questions. And that was my big reason for wanting to do today's, uh, today's question and answer. So I'm just going to start with a question that I'm not going to answer on the podcast. And uh, I, I'm just going to start with it because I had a few different people ask me about triangle entries. And uh, it's funny, I don't do many triangles anymore. Uh, my game has just kind of gotten away from it since I've been playing duck guard, which if you were to Google that, hopefully nothing would come up because it is of my own invention. But uh, duck guard is not really a heavy triangle position. So I don't do a lot of different triangles. So what I decided to do, and I'll record this just a little later uh, tonight after I get done filming or recording, whatever you want to call this. Uh, we can call it filming. I call it filming because we're on YouTube also. If you guys aren't aware, you can search Josh McKinney on YouTube and... I'm sure the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu show will be there. Um, there's also this motivating Josh McKinney that's like a bowler with one leg or something. And he's just, man, he just, he's just way more motivating than me. I don't know. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, I should leg lock him. That was a horrible joke. I should cut that out. I'm not going to. That was a good joke. But anyway, I uh, wanted to start with, I had a few different people ask me about triangle entries when I posted on my Instagram saying that I was going to do a question and answer. Obviously, I can't verbalize those on the podcast. It's very hard. So what I decided to do is I will post on my Instagram. Uh, this will come out Thursday, June 18th. I will post on my Instagram on Thursday, June 18th at night, probably somewhere from like five to seven central time. And I will post uh, three triangle entries because that was the question, not like how to finish the triangle, which I also have some really excellent and in my mind, unheard of details on how to finish a triangle. But uh, the big thing is I have a few really good entries too. And they're all three entries. They're from three different positions, but they utilize the exact same grips. And so, uh, you know, if we're simplifying jujitsu, which is kind of the goal, we're trying to see if we can make things work. We call this positional stacking. We can make certain grips or certain uh, attacks work from different positions. And so uh, it'll kind of give you guys a little bit of an entry into what positional stacking is. We talked about this uh, on my, uh, in the Simplifying Jiu-Jitsu ebook. And so um, if you guys are listening after June 18th at seven o'clock, you could just go to my Instagram, the Josh McKinney, uh, or I'll also post it on the YouTube later on, probably the same day. Um, which also, like I said, is Josh McKinney and you guys can get those three triangle setups. Be sure to let me know if you like them or if you think that they would never work in a million years. I would love to hear it. Okay. So this is our first question that I will answer. 
I really liked this question. It was really interesting. Uh, my friend Jose asked if you had to choose one position as the most important, what would it be and why? Okay, so typical black belt answer. I can't really answer that directly. How do you have the most important position, right? But I would say this. I would say uh, in, in situationally, like what you're using jujitsu for, uh, if you're using it for self-defense, if you're using it for competition, if you're using it to just get in shape, I really think this would be the position that I start with because it's accessible and um, it's very important to know. And I think a lot of people don't know how to finish from this position or even hold this position. And it would be the back. I think back control is still, and you're seeing it more and more, especially at the lower weight classes at high level jujitsu. Guys are getting so good at taking the back. Um, I wish I had it on video, but like five years ago, I would always tell my students to get good at omoplatas and back takes because that is where jujitsu is going. Uh, and strategically, the reason that jujitsu is going that way uh, from a competitive standpoint is guys have really good guards. If I were to sweep somebody, I get two points. Now, if I were on top in their guard and I get, I dive for their back, I try to do some type of back take and I miss it and I end up on bottom, I don't give up the two points. I don't, they don't get sweet points if I was attacking the back. Now, if I miss it or if I hit it, I get the back, right? So I think, um, I think that it's going to be the most, still the most, uh, high percentage finishing, finishing position in jujitsu. And I think it's where people are still going to be, uh, going to and attacking forever in jujitsu. I really think that that's going to be the big position. So I would get really good at finishing the back, especially if like I could only choose one thing because from a self-defense perspective, when you land so often, you kind of land in odd positions and there are scrambles. If you had that ability to take somebody's back and then once you got the back, be able to choke them unconscious in a few seconds. That is incredibly useful from a self-defense perspective. So I think for both, I would say the back. If you are somebody who's higher level at jujitsu and you're asking, hey, what should I learn at this point? It might start to switch. I would start to focus on the open guards, uh, whether passing or playing them. I just think that that is where most of your time is going to be spent as you get better at jujitsu. So, um, but if, if, if the question is like this, if I could only choose one position, it would be the back. If I could choose to be good at one position, it would be the back. I just think uh, it's just so useful. Um, so uh, that's my big thought on that, I guess. So, so next question that I have is what do your rest days look like? So how I use rest days. This is kind of how I do stuff. I'm very structured with everything. You guys, if you listen to the podcast, you know that I'm very structured with how I live my day to day, because if I am not, uh, I'm crazy. And so what I'll do, and I'm sure a lot of people deal with this, especially a lot of people, you know, jujitsu attracts like a certain type of person. So I'm sure a lot of people that do jujitsu deal with this is you, um, let's say you're at your house and you see that the dishes need done. And so you start to do the dishes and then you say, man, after I get done with the dishes, I need to do the laundry because you can't have the dishes done if the laundry is not done. And so then you get done with the dishes, you do the laundry and then you get done with the laundry and you do, you know, then you're cleaning out your garage. You actually literally this 100% uh, like two weeks ago happened to me. I decided I need to clean my office. Okay. This is, I was giving a generic answer and then I realized that I actually have a perfect story for this. I'm getting ready to clean my office. Uh, I needed to move some stuff around, but I couldn't clean my office because there were clothes in my office that shouldn't have been there. Why were they there? It's because my closet was too full. So I start to clean my office. I realize, man, I have a bunch of crap that I don't need in here and I have uh, too many clothes in here. So first thing I do is I start to get rid of clothes. I go into my closet and man, what in my closet I have like a chair in there. I have my dehumidifier. I have all kinds of stuff that um, shouldn't be in my closet. And so as I'm getting rid of clothes, I realize, well, I need to put this stuff in the garage. 
as I put stuff in the garage, I realize I can't put stuff in the garage because the garage is so messy. And so I had to clean the garage, my closet, give clothes to Goodwill, and my office just because I had the thought that I needed to clean my office. And I think a lot of people deal with that um, kind of that randomness of mentality. So I try to keep things very structured in my life. Well, off days for me, uh, usually when I'm taking off training, I allow myself to be a little less structured because it takes a lot of uh, brain power to just be structured, right? It takes a ton of brain power to say, this is what I, you know, this is me planning out my day. Like, well, don't plan out my day. Uh, and that kind of allows for me uh, to do different stuff. So the big things that I always try to hit on a rest day is I do like to move on rest days. I think it's important. Uh, a lot of times I'll ride my bike for like 20 minutes or 30 minutes just to get movement. Uh, that's something I really enjoy doing too. And it's not jujitsu. I try to stay away from jujitsu related stuff because uh, my life can be so consumed by jujitsu. Uh, and I don't want to ever I don't want to ever get tired of it. And so like having days and I still think about it, I still want to go train, but having days that I'm not training and um, I don't really have any type of, uh, I'm not watching competition. I'm not watching, I'm not doing anything uh, that's related to jujitsu. Something else I do a lot on off days is I like to cook. That's one of my favorite things to do that isn't train. And so I cook a lot on my off days and I eat a lot on my off days. I try to sleep in. I try to rest as much as I can because I know if I go in, I, even if I feel good on an off day and I do have a I, Tuesdays are my off days. Um, I'm structured on Tuesdays. I generally don't do anything. I've actually had to teach uh, a class on Tuesdays uh, because one of my coaches still isn't back uh, after the pandemic. And so I've had to teach a class. And so, uh, but generally that is my structure. I get one off day a week. It is Tuesdays. I don't answer any questions about the gym. I don't uh, really talk to anybody. Uh, usually I go out to eat with my parents, um, my wife and I, and um, my brother and sister, we all go out to eat on Tuesdays. That's super common, right? And uh, so I'll cook lunch or something like that, or we'll all eat at my parents' house and we'll all bring food. We eat a bunch, try to rest as much as humanly possible, but I try to do as little jujitsu as possible. And I would probably say anybody that is into anything, having an off day where you just, you can still move, you can still exercise if you want, but just don't focus on what you're constantly focused on. Just let your mind kind of rest. Uh, I think that will make a huge difference for helping people's off days. Uh, next, we will go with this, a really tough question to answer. What is the most important advice for a newbie? Uh, somebody that's newer at Jiu-Jitsu. You can kind of say newbie as, man, any belt. You could be, you know, you could be white, blue, purple belts even sometimes feel like they're newbies in Jiu-Jitsu because uh, Jiu-Jitsu is hard and it's got a lot of levels to it. And so you can feel like a newbie. Uh, there have been days as black belt that I have felt like a newbie because I've gotten beat up. But I'm going to look at it from newbie being a white belt, somebody that is, is generally just coming in to jujitsu. I think the first thing and the most important thing that I would ask myself is, um, do I like my gym? A lot of times uh, you, you go into your first class to start jujitsu and you like jujitsu, but uh, you know, you, I think you really have to make sure that you like the coach, um, that you like the, the facility, that you like every part of it. Because once you start to dig really deep into jujitsu, you're going to want to stay with that person. And so uh, if there are kind of like big signs that, you know, hey, this coach is kind of a jerk or this facility kind of sucks, I would, I would early on try to, uh, try to fix that, try to see if there's anywhere else to train or something like that. That's just like my first thought um, for early on. And the reason that I say that is because we all have the goal of like being sustainable in jujitsu. We all want to get good at jujitsu and get better and better and better. And if you don't like your environment now, um, when you're a blue belt or a purple belt, it's not going to change. And then it's much harder to switch at that point. Um, and it's, 
it, uh, for a lot of people, it's more negative uh, to switch at that point. But like, if you're going to switch, I think doing it early is important. And that's like kind of a outside um, advice for a newbie. I don't think that would probably be most people's answers. But also note that nobody's ever right in jujitsu. Okay. So like, uh, it's it, like in general, like all the time, I think for me, um, I think, uh, people listen to the podcast and they say, Oh, Josh is the authority on it. So if he says something that my coach disagrees with, he's right. Do not think that way. Um, except for there, what, what I just said, uh, you know, don't believe everything, just test stuff. Okay. Um, with everything we do, we're just constantly, everything's just trial and error in jujitsu. And so, uh, understand that like, I always tell my students like this, what I tell you, told you two years ago and what I tell you today, you may ask me the exact same question. I may give you two completely different answers and they both could have been right. Uh, it's important to just test things yourself though, um, because maybe it worked for me two years ago. This is what worked for me, but maybe I found something that was more efficient or worked for me better now. That doesn't mean that it's like everything's like you're right or wrong. So I think just going in with that mindset of um, when I hear things, I don't just always accept them. Sometimes uh, you have people, I have training partners. Um, here, perfect example, Jeff, who I just had on the podcast, Jeff uh, Schultz. He is um, somebody that pretty much if he says, hey, you should be doing this or you're not doing this technically, um, I don't even think twice about it. I don't even think of the need to test it because he has told me and given me such good advice and such good information on technique that I'm kind of used to it. So I'm just like, yeah, he, he knows, right? Uh, I don't think that's wrong, but just make sure that you're testing. You're going to be told so much stuff as a beginner. Um, so you test it, you test it out. And, uh, I think that would be my biggest advice that like the most important thing is just test everything. Uh, even the stuff that I say, um, you, uh, the, the question came about from um, them emailing about the simplifying jujitsu book. Test that stuff. If it doesn't work, then I was lying to you. I was just, you know, I was getting your email address so I could sell it to uh, charter. I don't know. So just make sure that you're testing everything. That's really important for jujitsu. Now, this was the reason, this question was the reason that I decided to do this episode. Okay, so this is uh, this is really tough, and I have um, I know a lot of people that have dealt with this, and um, I I hope that my students have never dealt with this. But um, so somebody asked, and they're they're newer to jujitsu. They ask, my dilemma is that I train at a gym where the instructors slash professors don't teach using a keep it simple approach, even armed with your program. I'm not sure a blue belt is going to be able to change their approach to teaching and open mat time would be the only time that I can truly practice the basics with a like-minded partner. How do you, how would you handle a student recommending a new teaching method or approach? Okay. So I answered this, uh, to my friend that messaged me on Instagram, but I will answer it again and I can dig a lot deeper. Okay. So the first thing I would say, is I probably wouldn't I probably wouldn't suggest um, a new training method or approach. And when I got to like purple belt ish, and I was still training with my coach regularly, um, there was always a lot of dialogue between us about training approach. And um, you know, like I I think I think I, I, I it's really important for me to be careful in these. Um, these kind of things because uh, my coach isn't your coach, right? We, we have different coaches. I just assume that most coaches are not like Kyle has been to me. Uh, I've always had a good relationship with Kyle. I probably never would have even felt uh, able to, um, to suggest anything until I was a purple belt because I just didn't know. Um, but as I became a purple belt, it wasn't, I was suggesting things to Kyle. We would dialogue. I think if you were really like looking at maybe the thought process of seeing what your coach's thought process on training is, I would just ask them some questions and kind of pick their brain. Uh, cause a lot of coaches, they honestly don't have a thought process 
when it goes into that. And I don't mean that in a negative way, like, oh man, these, these coaches don't care. They probably care a ton, but they probably have never sat down and said, why do we teach what we teach? Sometimes just asking that question. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, there, there is a, a certain philosophical uh, idea where you never tell people anything directly. You only can ask questions to allow them to get to that, uh, to that answer. And a lot of times that is way less threatening for people. You don't ask them, in a, why do you do it like this? You ask them, um, you really have to be curious. You really have to want to know why they do things the way that they do, why they teach, things, uh, teach the things that they teach. So I would first start with that. I would just ask, see what your coach's approach is um, and you know, see why they have that. Sometimes coaches don't have that and, and it's actually a struggle for them. When I first started, um, there was, you know, it was a struggle to find what I liked to teach and how and the order of things that I like to do it um, and what I found most effective. And it was, really, it was a huge struggle. As you, you know, as you do that, maybe that changes absolutely nothing. Maybe your coach is just like, we do it this way because this is the way I taught. I was taught and I'm good. And so it'll make you good probably, right? And I think that's cool. I think it's totally fine. If that happens, what you do is you have to go from, you know, the simplifying jujitsu method is how I teach at my gym. Okay, so this is how I, how I teach and how I m have my students focus on uh, specific techniques or specific positions. Now, that doesn't mean that that is the only way. That is what I have found to be the most efficient and effective way. There are ways in thought processes around this, though, because when I go to my coach's gym, I only go to open mats, and I have to train uh, during those open mats, how do I get better in those? I can't, I don't say, Hey, let's specifically spar the one position that I've been focused on. But what I try to do is when we roll, I try to focus on getting to that position. Let's say specifically, uh, we are doing, um, open guard at my gym and we were doing a lot of guard passing and we were adding a lot of Toriando passes to create angles to get into other passes. And so when I went in to my coaches to train, that's what I did. I just focused on Toriando passes, getting around the legs and using them uh, to get to my, uh, my knee weave position or my knee cut or something like that, right? And I went in with that focus. Going into training with a focus, even if it's an open mat, even if your gym only shows whatever technique and then in the last you know 15 minutes they say okay now we're going to roll just roll right we're just going to start the timer and you just roll just try your best to get into that position it may not be as efficient you may not be able to get as much time in that position but just by having a focus on what you're training you will notice a monstrous difference in your progression and uh, i give this example all the time I gave it on the, the first episode of this show when we talk about the end goal method. When you focus on one thing, even if you miss it every single time, even if you, okay, let's say uh, specifically, let's say I am going to, okay, we'll use the triangle because I'm going to give you guys some triangle setups. So you're going to add these triangle setups that I give you. Let's say you go into train and you, that's all you looked for. You missed it 100% of the time. You're driving home. You're going to now have the ability to ask yourself, why did I miss that triangle? It's an incredibly specific question, right? So a specific question is able to be answered. A generic and a broad question, for example, why did I lose tonight? It's impossible to answer. There are a million variables onto why you lost tonight, right? Well, you lost because you got your guard passed. Then you didn't know how to defend from side control. So you started framing away, extending your arms too far. And then they spun around behind you and then they started to take your back. You didn't know how to prevent the back take. And then they started to get their collar grip. They trapped your arm and you got choked. Well, how do you fix that? I have no idea. That was way too much stuff. Now, I got to close guard and every time I tried to throw out my triangle, uh, his head came free. 
that's, that's specific. We can answer that. We can figure out a way to fix that. So the big thought process, even if you're not able to hit the five essential positions of jujitsu, you can still simplify your jujitsu in your live rolling. Also, never be afraid to just ask somebody, hey, can we start from this position? Usually, people love that. It's like when you um, are with one of your buddies and he says, you know, like, I don't care what we eat. And you say, well, how about Taco Bell? People usually like that. Now, if it was your wife, she would probably say, oh, no, anything but that. But we won't get into that. Usually, people really like having somebody giving that suggestion and um, are usually on board. Oh, yeah, let's train that. I've, I never start in any position other than just open guard or on our knees or wherever you guys start at your gym. And so a lot of times that's really nice to have. Also, training on your own can be really good. I think it can be really useful. But, um, you know, that is, you know, maybe you don't have time for that. I, I understand that somebody, people can't. I love the idea of training on your own and just being super specific, positional spar with one partner. It will help you not get your body beat up so much. Uh, my dad and I do this all the time. And that is how we get good at positions. If we just positional spar, one position, we've done this for years, you know, and we will stay on that same position until one of us is finally like, okay, it's been eight weeks of doing this one position. Um, I'm killing everybody when I get to that position. And if I let people start from the defensive side, like if I'm defensive, I let them start with my back or whatever, I'm escaping on everybody. Let's move to something else. I don't think we're going to get much farther right now in this. And so that is usually how I approach it. It's best if you could train on your own, but if you can't, you know, you just, you got, you kind of have to find the way to set it up. It's like, um, you know, the, the simplifying jujitsu is a, um, is, is not a mathematical formula that if you change one thing, it's going to ruin it all. It's kind of one of those things that you can do. Um, especially we talk about in the pick a partner section, you can make little tweaks. You can say, Hey, um, this position doesn't really work for me. I don't like this position. My training partner is 300 pounds. Maybe working mount is not a good idea because my knees don't touch the ground. Uh, so you, there are variables. I know we don't talk about mount in the, as the five essential positions, but uh, that's okay. But it, it, you know, there are going to be different thoughts and they're going to be different um, little tweaks that you make. And I guarantee, like I said earlier, if I were to rewrite simplifying jujitsu two years from now, I bet you there would be some big differences in my thought processes and in my uh, training methods. Does that mean I was wrong the first time writing it? No, you just, you experiment and you figure these things out uh, in jujitsu and we want to keep them simple. We don't want to do too much experimentation because that's when we start to get too confused. That's when we stop progressing as fast is when we're doing too many different things. Uh, we want to be focused. We want to keep things simple. But there are going to be variables that have to change, and that's okay. Uh, you just try to keep things going in the best method that you can. And so that is, those are, those are like my big questions that I had that I really wanted to make sure that I hit. And I had one more question. I apologize. I can't. I went to a different, uh, oh, okay. So this was another one that I really liked. Developing grip strength. Now, this is important because, um, as most of the times when I answer questions, I give you guys, I answer a different question than the ones that you asked. So, with grip strength, it's useless. I do not worry about grip strength. And I know that sounds really bizarre, but when we lift weights, which I do, we focus on getting stronger overall, okay? A lot of grip fatigue and what you'd feel like is grip weakness is a technical error, not a strength error. Sometimes it can be. Every once in a while, you, uh, you just aren't strong enough for certain positions, but that is way less common than you would think. Generally, what happens with grip strength is you over grip when you don't need to be, meaning um, you have a collar grip. I have no intention of breaking this grip, okay? You have a collar grip on me. And 
you are squeezing that grip as hard as you can. Guess what's going to happen? Your arm's going to get tired. Nobody can do something as hard as they can for a long period of time. That's why it is as hard as we can. And so uh, grip strength is no different. You know, you want to be smart about your, your gripping. And uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with trying some different protocols. The only problem that I have with it, maybe I do think there's something wrong because I have a problem with it. But uh, the, the only thought that I have with it is we get too uh, grip strength focused. Sometimes what happens is we kind of break down our body a little too much. And then when we go into train, we can't grip anybody. And so uh, be smarter about which grips you're grabbing. Ask yourself, which grips are wearing my hands out? And then ask yourselves, how can I either tweak this grip to be more efficient or can I play a different position? Uh, I think that when you are, um, especially when you're a natural athlete, you know, you're naturally, you know, you're doing jujitsu, uh, the amount of control that we have over our strength I mean, we can control it. We can add 10, 20% strength, but there are guys that even my weight class that there is 100% no way I will ever be stronger than. Even if I quit jujitsu in general and just lift it, I would never be stronger than those guys unless I did steroids, okay? Just how it is. So instead of trying to uh, compete on an athletic level with these people or compete on a strength level with these people, I see if I can c compete on a more intellectual level. Can I be smarter? Can I grab the grips that don't destroy my grips? Uh, can I you know, do things without certain grips? I think that is one of the best ways to do it. And besides that, you just train, right? This is how strength works. Um, this is how pretty much all of our body development works. Our bodies are super lazy, okay? If we were to sit on the couch and do absolutely nothing for the next two months, we would lose muscle and we would most likely gain body fat. Why is that? Well, that's because that is all we are demanding of our body. Our body is always just trying to get by. And so if I am training um, spider guard a ton, my grips are going to get stronger. Um, they, they're going to, I'm going to also learn how to be more efficient with them. But that's the big thing is you just go and train because the more you do it, the more your body is going to start to develop around like, hey, we need to have this type of flexibility because this is what, what I am being forced to do, you know, and either that or you'll get injured and you'll have to quit. But uh, usually training, that's like one of the biggest ways that I look at um, getting strong and you're going to get a little bit stronger from training and then you're also going to be more efficient. And that is way more important than anything. There's so much, uh, people focus so much on the physical attributes of jujitsu. There's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, Bouchesh is winning every world title for a reason because his physical attributes are insane and he's pretty, he's very technically sound. Uh, but I would bet you, I would bet anyone, any amount of money, if Bouchesh weighed 180, he would not be winning the open class of all these tournaments, right? Uh, so, there, there's just certain amounts of uh, physical attributes we can't control. And so don't focus on them. Don't waste your time on them. Um, spend your time focusing on what you can do with your body and technically speaking, how you can uh, fix it. So those are the questions that I had. I have a few more. And like I said, um, don't wait for me to ask for a Q and a, if you have a question, just send it to me. A lot of times I just reply. Um, if it's something simple, if it's something a little more complex, like some of the ones we've got into today, I, would rather verbalize them and kind of talk through them. It just makes it easier on me and I don't have to type a bunch. And I feel like if the question is important, a lot of people may have that question. And so doing a Q and a makes it so much easier because you can send it to everybody. Right? So that is what I have for you guys today. Uh, again, the last plugs of the day, my Instagram, the Josh McKinney, you guys can check that out. You can always send me messages on that if you have questions. Um, and I will be posting uh, tonight I will be posting the, uh, three triangle setups and then, um, what was the other thing? Oh yeah. BJJ sucks.com slash simple. Be sure you have a week left. Get the ebook. It's really good from what people have told me. Uh, of course I think it's good. You know, I wrote it, but everyone else, I, I don't, I've gotten a ton of positive feedback. I haven't gotten any negative feedback, but I think that's more out of fear than anything. There could have been people that didn't like it, but, uh, you know, I, 
might stab them in the heart if they said it to me. But that's what I have for you guys today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I hope that you guys suck just a little bit less at jujitsu.